What's up, what's up, everybody? And once again, we are back and always brought to you by CasaTheRock.com. Support the show now. Go to CasaTheRock.com and cop that merch. We have a lot of stuff, T-shirts, ashtrays, something for him, her, everybody. So go there, support the show. Um, U.S. only at the moment, but for international, you can go to CasaTheRock.eu. I repeat, CasaTheRock.eu. Tell my bro Theo I sent you, and that's international. So, um, and shout out always to my Patreon family for holding me down. Again, um, we're winding up right now. I'm in the middle of a move. I'm taking care of some things, but we have some really, really big things about to happen, and we're gonna go in hard in the podcast, YouTube, universe. So we're taking everybody's heads off. So everybody get down with the guillotine gang and take those heads off with us. But um. Patreon, one love. And if you want to support the show, besides just tuning in and subscribing and spreading the word like you have been, right? You could go to patreon.com slash the smoking word. Again, patreon.com slash the smoking word. There's tiered two dollar tiers and up. Basically, every tier you get exclusive footage, different things happening. You get the podcast before everybody. You get to know who's on the podcast before everybody else. And you get to support the show and keep the show rocking and doing all that good shit. So patreon.com slash the smoking word. Get down with the get down and shout out to all of you guys that have been holding me down. Once again, always shout out to CC Delivery. You know what's up for keeping me mentally stable. And again, to the Third Coast Family Farm. We out here. You know what time it is. Follow me on Instagram. Hoya Rock 357. Um, smoking Word Podcast on Instagram. If you got any questions, a lot of you guys send me music and links. If you want a chance to get your music heard or anything, no, any questions, hit us up at the Smoking Word Podcast on Instagram, and we'll get around to it and all that good stuff. So very, very important. Make sure to subscribe to Smoking Word TV on YouTube. Listen, we're taking over the channel. Basically, that's my channel, and I'm making a network, an underground network. For all you animals out there, we need something of ours on the next level. So get down with the get down. Smoking Word TV. Go check it out. This week on the Smoking Word, I figured let's get, let's say, let's get, we're going to keep it to the Northeast and bring the metalcore OGs in the building. Yo, let's hear it for Brian Fair from Shadows Fall. Let's set this shit off. Check, check, check. Yeah. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can yeah, hear I hear you. Oh, shit. Nice. I'm there like, I'm, I'm almost like two for two. You and who did I have last? I'm fucking Matt. You guys got on. No problem. Everybody else, it takes me 10 minutes to get this it's shit. It's crazy because technology usually hates me. Like, I have like an electromagnetic field to make shit just not work. Oh, <laughs> I suck at this shit, but I got a, a 10 year old and a 13 year old. So I'm good. He's dead, so and I know you got, I know you got a kid, so that, that helps. Yeah, they're catching with- me up on shit. It's fun. When they were on Zoom for COVID, man, they were, they, they were my IT department. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's what I just um, was crazy. That's why I started doing it was um, I brought the podcast back during the the whole COVID bullshit. But because I saw everybody using the Zoom shit, and I'm like, what is this Zoom? Zoom, I thought it was like only some type of advanced. I mean, it's advanced, but I'm like, oh, that's for like networks and stuff. Yeah. And then my son's like, oh, I'm on school on it. And then, you know, I put A with B. I gives you an audio file and this. I said, wait a minute. This is great. It's the way to do it. It's the way to do it, for real. How great is it? it, it it's like... um. Moron proof. I got to watch the words I say nowadays. You know, exactly. I was going to use another word that (laughs) that already uh, will fuck my algorithms. But you know, that's what it was. It's tough to to, to get out, especially growing up in the the age we did. That was just, it meant something different, you know? Listen, (laughs) and and you know, I'm known for saying a certain word that's very, very taboo (laughs) and all, and it's not meant to be like that, but I'm a work in progress, everybody. So you got to, but, um, Yeah, uh, it's not the same. It's the same. It's the same thing that um, 
that the problem that 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 happens everywhere. You know what I mean? It's like um um the price of living where you don't know till you travel. We travel, so you know everybody thinks um oh you got to be rich to live here. You need this to live there, and it's like no, it's just we're so caught up in in our in our big city life that um we don't know the, about normal life it's crazy that's, that's the thing when you do travel you start realizing like yo is this, is this dude rich you're like no they just live in a place where it's not a billion dollars per square foot you know hey, <laughs> exactly where i live now it looks like oh man who the fuck this guy he <laughs> exactly. plays with slip. oh that's why he's the dude guy in slipknot well i'm like no it's just doesn't i don't live in new york city no more so exactly man. Where it changes I everything. so but st louis now so but st louis is dope it's uh and it's also rich with music Oh uh, yeah, man. I, it's, it's been cool. There's a lot, I got a, been jamming with some local guys here in a band called hell night. That's like just some, it's funny. The older I get, the more aggressive and angry the music gets, even though I'm mellowing out. I don't know. Yeah, how it's same shit. And it's some nasty shit. It's just like down tune, dirty, fast punk rock. Like it's fun. Yeah. Uh, I heard you. I, I, I remember when you were working on it and then I also heard you on, on EZEX podcast, shout out to EZEX and Jane, Jay and all of them. But yeah, but um. And I know I heard you. I heard the talks, but you also always had some other side, like other projects. You I'm, were... I'm always making something. Yeah, like I was jamming with uh, Mike from Killswitch in a band called Death Ray Vision, which was mostly the guys from Overcast. You know, uh, yeah, back together. Uh, but I just wasn't local enough to really take it to the next level. And then uh, another project, Downpour, with uh, uh, some guys who used to be in Unearth and Kingdom of Sorrow and stuff. Uh, more of a studio thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, like there's like a million hyphens after my name yeah. when it comes to bands now. You know, like I forget but, them sometimes. I'll be doing like some shout out thing, and I'm like, ah, I don't even remember. I anymore. know, I forget. <laughs> I, you forget how long. And, yeah, it, and now Shadows Falls cooking again a little bit. So it's it's just uh, it's been busy and but good. Like I, I, if I'm not I, making music, I'm going crazy. So absolutely. So I and, keep and that's why I also I want to reach out because I, I obviously I heard you on Ezex thing, but I seen you guys start getting um. I'm busy again and i saw the the fucking the big show at the palladium that shit looked dope it was packed oh, out crazy. it's crazy i was like man it was covid like, soup but it was crazy like, <laughs> uh, like what, what is it you know exactly what I mean? so uh it's but like, it, was, it, it, it it's crazy that it finally happened after like you know that's the thing it was six years though too so it finally felt like a legit like break yeah. to come back to you know uh and everyone's schedules worked out for the first time and we just figured out a way to make it happen but doing it at the palladium just felt like going home you know it was people travel from all around but it felt very family oriented yeah. and I, I me having my kids up there i was like they at least got to see me be cool once you know youtube that. doesn't do it justice you know they, uh, they had to see it for real i you saw know? that my kids don't give a fuck i say it all the time they don't give a shit i can't pay them to watch a mad boy track uh, i almost like, don't blame them but i get yeah. it but, but yeah and but um I, um i saw that so you got to so that was the first time back in six years out of six on stage together. All you guys together. Yeah, it was first time we, wow. we had planned to do it the year before. And then what like shutdown came and I, I remember we luckily bounced back, you know, uh, we're able to pull it off. Uh, but yeah, it was the first time, man. So it was like I'm getting, you know, trying to figure out how to practice and I'm away from those dudes. So I'm literally cranking the, the tunes in my headphones, doing cardio the whole time <laughs> to try and simulate like the adrenaline of stage. And screaming into the air. So anyone walking by my house is like, what the yeah. fuck is oh, happening? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone's getting tortured to a beat in there. Like, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, um, and that's what, and, and, oh, so how much rehearsal did you get to do with the band? Did you yeah, see? they had been practicing like crazy because getting it tight. I'm just the singer, you know, we're going to waltz in there at the end. Oh, I know all about you guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but I at least kept up. I wanted to be, I wanted to come in at like the hardcore Olympics where I was like trying yeah. to, I want like, to hit that stage with nothing left, but not being able to hold anything back, you know? So, uh. And they had been jamming at least a couple times a week for months. And then I got out there for two weeks before the show oh, and got yeah. to actually get in the room and jam. Cause you know, oh. that was the one thing it's like, you can practice at home, but like, that shit don't mean nothing. Yeah. It's until you're all in the room and you're like, that's, there we go. That's the sound, you know, like, so yeah, it, yeah. and it felt good. We, we hadn't, we probably hadn't been that rehearsed ever. So we were tighter than I think <laughs> we were, than ever were. Yeah. yeah we, used to, we were terrible about practicing back in the day. We do the classic, like get together before a tour, run through half of it. Look at the set list. Like we know those. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah leave you. I oh, we got to go. play that again. You know? So, uh, but yeah, so man, it felt good to hit the ground. Like a, just a fucking steamroller. Yeah. And look great too. I seen videos, a lot of footage. I seen the lights, the whole shit, the whole. Yeah. We, we brought in Anthrax's light guy. Thanks to John's connection. You know, and he yeah, crushed they, it. So, you know, that was the other thing. If we're going to do it, we, we, we 
they weren't trying to squeeze every penny. We're like, let's make big production and have a sick lineup, even if it means, you know, us not getting, you know, what, like yeah. as much on the back end. We're like, Blow no, it man, out. this has got to be a fucking, yeah, exactly. It's got to be extravaganza. Yeah. So once we had that lineup set up with Unearthed and Darkest Hour and like, you know, just bands Jesus. that we came up with, it was just like, this is perfect. And then yeah. we were like, yeah, we got to bring the lights. Like, also, we weren't sure of our stamina. So, like, you got to get the strobes <laughs> yeah. going. So, it's like, yo, they're going they're crazy. They're going off. Now. You're just standing there just doing the, this. And you know off. that. You know that being a hardcore yeah. kid and then go, shooting over to the metal side, they have some advantages with the strobes. Oh, without a doubt, man. When you got hair, too, you're just like, oh, they're going crazy. You're like, no, nah, man, I'm bobbing my head. Yeah, That's the it, hair you know? is like the neck from the, <laughs> exactly. from the traps up. You got you to gotta run around and do calisthenics when you're a hardcore fan. Yeah, I know. And, fucking, <laughs> and let me ask you, did you do um what was the specific set you did for that was it like a specific album or you try to hit like the yeah, hits tried to hit like- the whole the whole history that was it was tough you know because we wanted to play a while but you know for me metal can only, and hardcore can only come in certain size doses we're not iron maiden we can't go up there and do two two hours 40 yeah, minutes you know <laughs> yeah. so uh we uh we trying to fit them in was tough but we wanted to hit every record every era and also just kind of cover a lot of ground, like sonically, you know, cut, make yes. hit everything that we did. And it was tough. So uh, the festivals are going to be even tougher because we got some festivals coming up and like trying to get that festival set for some people. It's the only time they're going to see you. And you're like, man, you can't can't fit everything in. Yeah. So. And especially you guys got parts with this. You know, it, it, it comes down the singing. That shit got to be it, it sounded great on the videos. But, you know, that shit always got to be on point. You know, yeah. hardcore bands are Har- yelling shit. You can kind of fake Dude, the that harmonies, shit. man. The harmonies when they're off, man, <laughs> they're it's, it's off. like, oof, it's you notice it. And we're not one of those, you know, bands that got a lot of like let, we're not playing the tracks or auto tune or any of that shit live. Like some people are straight up just, you know, having all that shit done for them. Yo, you come that, out, you, you come off like that quarter of a, of a, no- <laughs> let like, me oof. tell you, I seen it when you, well, one, you got a killer for a drummer and that not that, um, years ago we played with fear factory and not that that guy is in a killer, but he had his drums all, you know, um, um, I, what's, I even forgot the word where, you know, you had, it was all triggered. You know, yeah, yeah. like crazy that the triggers went ham. I was there. Yo, that shit sounded like a prodigy concert. <laughs> Yo, I, I was like, dang, that's the one thing. Like, I, I took a lot from metal. Like, you know, we're the hardcore motherfuckers, but we I'm that metal dude. Like, I love that shit. Like, that's what I try to bring into Madball was, yo, we need big guitars. The metal dudes got the guitars. They got our guitars got to sound like the metal guitars. All right. We got punch. the balls, but they got that. All right. They sound tight and big. We got to sound tight and big. Like, you know, I love metal, but, but I wanted to do it with, you know, as yeah, gorilla as possible, but with a little bit more finesse and shit, you know, yeah. and I try to you know, try to mix it up. But let, and let me ask you the hold on with the, the what, what, so when you did the set, uh, this is where I almost uh, a str- a straight off. Um, did you get to, cause this, this is something that happened to us when we had to do, you know, we did a, you know, whatever set it off record or whatever. For, did you end up doing songs that you never did before, but you did them at the show? No, you know, we, we had a few that we were going to try to, and we just didn't have the time to work them out. So we, and we, we had to, yeah, like that. It, we wanted to do a few deep cuts. We also we did a Pink Floyd cover on one of our records that we've never played live, and I really wanted to bust that out for that. But the idea of having to do those vocals for the first time on that show, we're like, ah, you know, we don't have the time for that shit. But yeah, it was crazy. Like having to relearn that shit was it's crazy. Right? Going through the catalog of sixteen years of albums, you know, twenty years as a band, it was like damn man like trying to focus all that shit down and remember all those parts and also yeah. realizing like man I, when i was young i was spitting out a lot of syllables like yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to keep that breath up now i was like damn all right now now let me ask you this as you a little bit older now and now obviously we alter how we do our things to get the best out of what we do do you think all right maybe everybody younger sometimes more energetic but you do you think you know how to nail it down more you know, like uh, you- I, I, I feel more seasoned now. Exactly. I, you know, it was one thing I've been out of game shape, you know, for a while because we just hadn't played shows. But luckily, I've been doing stuff with Hell Knight and a few other things. But uh, yeah, no. As far as I, I feel like I know yeah. how to work my throat better than I do as a young and I had the energy. But I was blowing it out all the exactly. time. Exactly. Now I, I know I can make it through the show. And but I also, I like I said, I, I, I don't think I prepared for a show like that ever. And it felt good to know, like, all right, man, everything else now I can just go have yeah. fun and go nuts. Yeah, because that's what I like to, to like what I try to be, you know, um, point out that is like, yeah, we're away from it. But 
you know, sometimes think older people look at like now. It's in a lot of ways, you know, if you're into still into the music and you're older, you kind of dial in. You know, the older yeah. you get, you learn how to sink in and, and the strokes, like if you're painting, the strokes are just smoother and nicer. You know what exactly, I mean? Exactly. Exactly. You just the flow is there, you know, like and that's the thing. And you also do even know how to manage your energy too. like where you're like, nah, you know, I know how to like work this, you know, instead of just going crazy in like the first few songs and being gassed, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, you get and, that um, pace down and you just you, and also you're starting to read each other's minds when you've been doing it for that long. Exactly. So, you're on that when when you connect like that, I, that's what I try to tell people. I go, there's something like I go. You could take the best players in the world, put them together. Yeah, it'll be cool. But then you could take just people that are just nobodies, but they're just lined up mentally playing together. And it's just like, hey, Leonard Skinner, you watch that documentary. They sounded like that because they played and lived together, ate together. That's the thing is, is, is that people try and break down to what makes, you know, why is this band so much better and more powerful than this? And that's that. It's that connection. It's like, and you can't find that it just happens like you get together with guys where it's like that all falls together and that's that extra ingredient that takes bands from being like good to being like legendary you know it has to have that that click and when a band magically like it that that's something you can't replicate or like predict or you know it just happens let me ask you this what is it because i always thought this shit and, and you're you're a good guy to represent this question what is it about the northeast and that that the metal part, which I love, that's what I love in New York. To me, I always like the metal part into the hardcore more than the punk, than the older mm-hmm. generation. I was more into that. Why you think the Northeast, the New England, especially area, had more of that feel being so close to Boston that had the old punk, you know, the whole slap shots and all that old punk stuff. But yet you guys are like where the metal core, whatever comes from is that area in yeah, my book. It's crazy because my generation, I think the shows were way more balanced that way, where I remember seeing a lot of thrash opening or playing with like Sick of It All or Cro-Mags and all these shows on the channel when I was a kid. But before that, it was completely that like old school SSD, DYS, like punk rock style stuff and warring with the metal dudes, you know, like like that shit didn't mix. So it was it was really that that kind of late 80s, early 90s generation of shows where I remember seeing you know, leeway come up and it would below it, it would be like, you know, thrash bands from, you know, like either overkill or, yeah, or, yeah. You know, or even, but and mixed up bills like that. And I think the Boston shows were totally like that. So when we started playing bands, we were taking those Chromags, like agnostic front attitude towards shit, but also, you know, playing a lot of like more thrash stuff too. So I, it, but then it, it, it got like out of hand where like the genre mixing was crazy and it's great. It was just such a weird melting pot. And then that's where bands like converge and, and Kill Switch come out of who sound completely different, but came out of that same sort of, you know, absolutely the beginning, you know, it, it, it bugged me out because in a weird way, like we were in the middle of it, not as far as an influence. But when we were touring Massachusetts, we toured with the, the uh, Sam Black Church, with Hell the trees, yeah, with um, yeah. Stomp Box, you named all those Hell eclectic, yeah. you know, bands, you know, a, 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 a toxic narcotic, like these certain bands. And I know you know about, I, I talked to Maddie Henderson. And he says, what's up? And yes, indeed. Yeah, we, 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 we worked the ice cream shop together, bro. Yeah, it's Tuscanini's funny. I, in the house. Yeah, I came off tour broker than I've ever been from an overcast <laughs> tour and walked in looking for a job. And I see him behind the counter. I'm like, oh, man, what is You're happening like, here? This is hardcore Perfect. heaven. You're yeah, like, exactly. But then literally make an ice cream. You know, yeah, like, exactly. Or May ice cream, like bomb ass shit. The bomb, like the yeah. there is. Shout out you know. to, to rest in peace wherever Tuscanini is, but uh, the, it's some still of the rolling. best. Tuscanini oh, is, is it? Still, still rolling. Yeah. So I yeah, still out in Cambridge, it. Mass. Yeah. We oh, would so roll good. up there every time we were there and leave. <laughs> You know what? Uh, tubs of the shit. You Dude, know that, that place employed more Boston hardcore slash, you know, adjacent yes. people. Like there was dudes from Bane, Toxic Narcotic. Everybody. Yeah, you know, it was crazy. The vigilantes, everyone worked there. It was hilarious. So, and then, so you're you're Boston born in Boston? Yeah, okay. right oh, outside. Oh, I was born. I was born in Framingham, which is right outside. But then I, I I lived in Boston forever. Went to school okay. at Boston University. Uh and then uh, but then yeah, now Midwest living. But so yeah, coming up shows then there was such a cool eclectic feel to it and, and, yeah. and people were all over the place and i think that really led to us because like you were saying man, i when we were writing some of the earlier shadows fall stuff we were obviously had a thrash and like melodic death metal influence but we'd be like yo we need a mad ball stop yeah, yeah. song you know like like, like I, you gotta have a two-step just like something because that was part of who we were too and like 
you know, we didn't want to stay you know, like pay, cut and paste it together. It had of to course. flow still, but like those were influences that we couldn't get away from. That's part of who, you know, and, and it's funny. Yeah. With. And there's actually a connection. Also another connection with you guys and, and one of our albums besides Zeus shout out to Zeus. Who I'm going to get Zee. on. You actually hit Zooch. him up. Yeah. Um, so I think we were doing, um, the one record we did to infiltrate the system record. One of these records we've done, I forgot what one of the Zeus records. And so the bass I roll up with this fucking problems with it. You know, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm just, we're hearing all types of shit. I, every time I bring my it's own the gremlins bass, at planet Z, man, exactly. <laughs> no, but check it out. So we're having all these problems. He even had the guitar that shop there with the guitar dude. And we find and it, it just wasn't cutting it. And then we're sitting there and we're kind of stumped because I'm not like an anal guy, but I'm like a little bit of an anal guy. I'm like, yo, that shit just got to be low end. He's thumpy. You know, I'm a Fender P guy. And I'm like, I want that traditional ballsy style bass, but I need a low end rom, blah, blah, blah. And we, we can't find it. And then Zeus is sitting there and he goes, hold on one second. And he goes behind the fucking council and he pulls out a bass. It was Paul's bass. He's like, <laughs> yo. Paul, this is one of these old Paul bases. I don't know. It's like a, it was like a, I don't even think it was a real Fender that one, but it had a, a yeah. dope pickup in it. Yeah, like yeah. Local pickup. He goes, I don't know. It's like a remake. Check it. Yo, we literally plugged it in and it was banging. I said, we're using that shit. The magic. That's great. Yeah, he pulled it out. Holy base. Yeah, we pulled it in. I was like, oh, that was on the record right away. So I was like, nice. And um, nice. but I was gonna say, so how you write? So how did you find the crazy music? What was the first? What was, you know, especially growing up in Mass, Mass yeah. like New York and a DC, it, it's one of the places. It may be a California. It, it's the one of the few places that it could be common to grow up with having a punk rock or hardcore. You know, in the yeah, schools, it's, it's and, much more right. likely, and it's it's much easier to get like yeah. more involved because you can get to shows. It's yes. not like they're coming through few and far between. But for, yeah. for me, it all started with skateboarding, where like I started getting into stuff through Thrasher magazine and uh. knew all these bands. But I was still like, you know, this is like twelve years old, yeah. you know, kid, like starting that shit. But then the first time I started going to shows, I met Mike D. Uh, you know, went on being Overcast yeah. and Killswitch. Uh, skating a ramp and he's like yo i'm going to see leeway breakdown uh i think only living witness opened and uh th- not stone temple pilots but this boston stp yeah so uh show at the channel and like hard, hard show totally so that was like my indoctrination from like i'd seen a few local kind of punk battle of the band type gotcha. of scenarios you know but that was the first real deal show at the channel Fuck. And man, that was the end. I was that like, was, yeah, that was leeway on uh desperate measures too. So they're coming out just like killing yeah, it. Just and sound and metal huge. too. I, you know, I, I still love shredding kind of metal guitar. So to see them combining that just blew my mind. You know, I was so dumb. before that you, all right, you are already a metal. But I was already, oh, I, I was already into it. Like I, like I was, when I was young, you know, I got into like the first records I bought the same day were Blizzard of Oz and uh, Men at Work. Like all I right, bought those two cassettes. That's a hard you know. combo. Hard yeah, combo. you know, like so. Which dude? Go listen to that. Business as usual the, is goes hard, man. The hi hat yeah. on that shit. That drummer is just unstoppable for yeah. it. But anyway, I digress. So, <laughs> so I was already a little like metalhead dude, listening to like you know Ozzy, Judas Priest, yeah. which then led to like the Anthrax and Metallica stuff. Uh, but hadn't really, you know, and then hardcore wise, like I said, through Thrasher, I had yeah. gotten a Youth of Today break down the walls cassette with my yeah. subscription. That, ah. was my, that was my first real deal like whoa okay like yeah. i thought shit was hardcore before but i'm like no nah, there's a it. whole like just step up like yeah you know so that got me in and so i was a little skater dude with you know misfit shirts and all that shit yeah but when i really got to shows was yeah i think i was i, I think might have been 15 when mike took me to that show and that was it i was every weekend after that was just all ages shows in boston yeah, that's dope. Like for me, like uh, again, that me- and like you, what you said, like m- leeway on that record, metals. Fuck, that's what I love. Like, l- I was a hardcore skin, and even at my most hardcore skin down, I always was like, yo, we used to be like, yo, fuck this, we that metal shit. We used to say that when it was taboo to say it. And we were all skins, you know, because we all love Slayer, Celtic Frost, because yeah. we were like, you know, but we were like, um, as you know, we started. Obviously, we all. I came up, I had an older brother, so I got, I was lucky to, you know, 
already have the venoms in the background of my house, you know, yeah, and all that. But I grew up with the fucking Judas Priest. Sabbath is my shit. But, you know, and then the early Metallica and all that stuff. But then, yeah. you know, later, I always loved metal and I was always like, so I grab I I didn't like the fantasy that I always associated with it. Yeah, but exactly. I but what I loved was when the hardcore dudes did the same shit and got the same fantasy. But <laughs> I was but I was like, OK, now is my excuse. We could come out with full stacks and not yeah. be called out as some rock star how, shit. How hilarious is that shit to think how it was like literally in the mid 90s, especially when there was like crazy, like, you know, uh, everything was t- you couldn't do anything or you were considered selling out it was like you know if, if you weren't playing a show for free or donations of canned food to food <laughs> uh, not exactly, bombs yeah, or like yeah. some other shit yeah, or, yeah. or everything going to some charity Facts. you were considered a sellout where you're like well we at least need some gas money that'd be nice. exactly how, how and you're crazy like why you got nice equipment you're like ah because uh, it sounds good and we like it you know i know right <laughs> and this is a fact on the infiltrate the system record it's funny you say that go back to zeus so mm-hmm. One, we loved everything that came out of Zeus' studio before we worked with Zeus. But everybody, Haybreed is popping. Everybody wanted to be Haybreed. I go, the last thing we want to do is be Haybreed. We're not Haybreed. But man, we love that sound. And obviously, when we talked to Zeus, Zeus was like, listen, I know, man, boy. And he yeah, and I love this. This is why I love Zeus. That first, the minute he told me this, when we first met, he got me. He goes, I'm not going to be the guy blamed for fucking up man, boy, sound. I said, <laughs> that motherfucker, you got that's you. But 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 um, <laughs> um, uh, but what I did love was like you know again I love that um um we were able to like uh big guitars you know like um 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 a, a take pride in your thing like being tight you know yep. um uh, uh, um uh, don't just put put your don't just turn your amp on maybe no, dial it in. That's the thing. Zeus is going to, he's like, if we're going to do it, he's, he, you're going to sound like you. He's like, but well, you're going to sound like the monster version of you. It's going to yeah. be, it's going to sound as big as any record, but it's going to still sound the way it should. Yeah. But he ain't, he ain't fucking around either. I mean, all I would hear is like, that was great. Do it again. Like, yeah. So, so I mean, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we were like, okay, we're dialing in. We, we want the big, I want, I was like, man, I want all the metal dudes to hear and be like, it can hang with the metal shit, but we don't want to sound like, hey, all right, blah, blah, blah. We had that talk, all right. But we have this one track. It's a real metalish crossover track. And the one part, we have a double bass in it. But before we recorded it, we had to have a talk. Because at that time, Madball didn't have a, a straight double bass part. And we were like, okay, we're doing a record with Zeus. Yeah, we're, now we're, it, And then it, we're going to cross the line and, and have yeah, a full double bass run, you know? Yeah, yeah, and we were like, you know, we just were like, no. We do whatever we want, but we were like, we don't want to look like we're coming off trying to be Haybreed or whatever, which at the end of the day, didn't. And we were like, yeah. fuck it, we're doing it. But we had to discuss it because at that time, people would look at something like that and try to chop your head off. Oh, totally, totally. It, it, she would make the baby steps, do a little accent here and there with the yeah. double kick, you know? Like, and yeah, then- <laughs> exactly. You know, and with Madball, obviously, you know, we carry that hardcore flag. People want to dissect you, even though we always brought that metal shit that's what i brought to the bang was like i started sneaking in slowly because i knew mabo was af you know ba- like, yeah. i don't want to say baby F, but i was like that and i'm like i like that metal shit i was already on some groove shit so there i was like oh. well that's the difference to- too is you you combine it with that groove and you got your own sound that's not gonna just sound like you're taking thrash riffs and you know yeah, putting it on a hardcore and that's beat. exactly what i liked about certain bands like you guys and the other guys that crossed over was the influences of metal, I was still more in tune with. I'm a thrash guy more than coming. Nothing wrong with the newer generation, but their first, their Judas Priest and Metallicas are now like, let's say you guys and the other bands. And they're, that's their base, which is cool. But yeah. style wise is going to be more towards that style than the root of it. You know, whatever. Nothing's right or wrong, but exactly. I'm, I like that thrash but, shit. Yeah. And, and that's, th- th- I remember seeing, Really, it was leeway would do the fast picking thrash, but the beat under it would be like, yes, you know, and just drop it. Absolutely. And you're like, that is that changed everything. And I was like, man, you know, and it had a different sound where you're like, you know, it's a metal riff, but it's it just just hits different. And 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 I take and and Madball, like our remedy for writing, that's I took that big time from the metal guys. This was my beef with the metal. And and I could tell you who I who did it right for me for the first time that I was like, those are the motherfuckers was X Hoarder. Because my problem was Fuck this, yeah. like 
metal will come in and they'll they'll stop the guitar would have that riff and you're expecting a beat down riff and then they'll come in with a you know kind of a and kind of like oh drop it in half just yeah exactly drop the half time you gotta gotta drop the so i remember yeah x order the kings of that group oh listen you know you already know and then i remember back then being on roadrunner so we would just take any cds we could get to like give them away to the record stores that would let us give it to them. <laughs> shout out to Roadrunner. But I remember Willie early on, Shepler. Shout out my boy Willie out of all people. Willie goes, yo, check this shit out. And I was like, oh, man, let me check it out. And it was the slaughter in the Vatican. But they just dropped the law at that time. The law, yeah. I put that shit on. I looked at him. I go, I look at all jokes. I just got goose pimples. Because I remember hearing that, that, one, that first track. And I go, that's that shit. I was like, they're doing what I couldn't verbally describe. You know, the riff come in and then drop it in a halftime. Boom. Like, uh, uh, and I said, these motherfuckers got it. So I was like, OK, I'd pick off that. And I learned how to bring my metal influence more and, and still keep that shit hardcore. And then, you know, help. That was all that type of shit. You know, thank God for the metal and hardcore, man. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, and but, fucking- think of, but th- it was so funny back then. It used to be like, keep your peanut butter out of my chocolate shit where you know i literally we'd be overcast would be opening for band you know like a bunch of straight edge hardcore bands that were like complaining about like keep metal out of hardcore and we're about to go on next like sorry yeah you know? yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah exactly and then you know how things change fast forward we're playing with earth crisis they're more metal than us well and, and that's uh, what it started to happen is all of a sudden hardcore was more just like slow metal you know like <laughs> heading that direction and uh, which is also that's why, uh, you know, with Shadows Fall, we started like, all right, now we're going to bring back the like classic metal, like vocal yeah. harmonies. We're going to even we'll sneak a ballad in on you. Like, oh, yeah. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. We had to go to the next level. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So I, I learned something today that I didn't know because I went quick on a Wikipedia quick and I didn't know this, that. Phil was it, it was the first singer of the band. I didn't know that. Yeah, there was an album with him. Before I saw that album. album I didn't. Band. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he and there was a singer way before him that did like a couple demo songs. But yeah, so o- Overcast took all the uh, took Shadows Fall on the first U.S. tour they went on, like outside of New England when they were still with Phil. Gotcha. And then just things kind of started heading a different direction and uh, Overcast broke up. And they asked me, uh, Matt literally came on stage at the last Overcast show at the Tune In in, in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. I love the Tune In. I swear there's still like feedback in the air. And he's like, yo, I got to talk to you. I'm like, <laughs> yo, let, let me change my shirt, bro. Like, like I, I literally, the band I was in for eight years just broke up. Like, yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Let me lay yeah. Give me a fucking second here. <laughs> but and then, he, and then I heard a new song they were working on. And I'm like, all right, I had a second. I'm in. Like, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, so. And that, oh, so that's those. So then they just like, you went like literally, right? Like, it, it right into right in the shadows fall where we start. I think I recorded and uh, demos and did a show within a month of oh. like overcast last show, which we had known we were breaking up for a little while, but you know, yeah. so like, uh, but, and then we, we started that demo got us on century media. And before the end of that first nine months, we were, we had a deal and we were recording the first record. So it happened fast mm-hmm. where, yeah, I didn't know what I was going to do after overcast. I was like, man, that was at that point I was, you know, in my early twenties, but I'd been in that band since I was 15. And it's, you know, like, seems like it's your life. Exactly. And then, so, and then that happened and it was so fast. I didn't even have time to think about how I <laughs> shit just took off and we were on the road 10 months out of the year for the next decade, you know? So Yeah. So that, for, the, for, that the label you were on when you joined was Century Media. Century the Media. Yeah. So it, yeah, uh, we, we, we sent these like a couple demos. Uh, I think it was Serenity, First Noble Truth, a couple songs, and they got signed off of that. And we went right into Zeus's uh, to record. And man, you talk about recording on like, you know, a budget then. That was crazy. And yeah. he still hadn't had, we were recording to ADAT there and at, at the spot still. And uh, we had to, I remember we fixed some sort of drum thing and you had to do it all manually. We're all sitting there with different yeah. buttons and they, like just ready <laughs> oh, to go yeah. and do this shit. It was fucking hilarious. I know but, that shit is crazy doing records like that. Ooh. Yeah, but Zeus made magic out of, with, not, with barely anything. And it sounded amazing. So, uh, and then that was, you know, once that record came out, we literally hit the road and we were in such a weird spot sonically at that time where that record didn't sound like really anything that was happening really yeah. at the time, especially for Century Media. They were a real death metal or power metal label. Exactly. Like we, you got, yeah. We, you know, we were kind of in the middle, which was, 
And then, uh, so we toured, our first tour was with Dismember, Cataclysm, and Christian, full death metal tour. Wow. Where we were like definitely the softest band on, yeah, yeah. on the run. Then we did King Diamond next, you know, yeah, so we're yeah, yeah, all the traditional yeah, yeah. metal. And then we went out with Glassjaw after that, who was like total post hardcore. We're like, yeah, yeah. You're playing in front of anybody to with any type of thing. And that really was good for us at the beginning because we, since we didn't have a scene, we crossed over in each one and we're like, yeah, yo, we're just going to grab people from everywhere and, and just fucking start a party. You, know? you guys did the, the Ozfest and all that, those things? That, right? sh- that, yeah, 2003, we did the Ozfest that sort of was the first of the indie bands like us, Sworn Enemy, Kill Switch. Got you. Uh, you know, uh, E Town even ended up on that. Dude, wow. Think about, think about like Ozfest realizing they'd let all these fucking Mama Luke sneak in through the back door. That's why no you'll see that we no already, more. Like rolled that deep and were friends anyway, and it was just chaos. Oh, I know that sounds great. Yeah, it was a blast. So that, yeah, it was 2003, and it was it was basically half bands kind of from our scene and half new metal bands like lower kind of tier major label new metal bands. Gotcha. And by the end, half of those bands had broken up. Or like disappeared. It was crazy. Yeah. They could yeah. see the changing of the like. Yeah, the tides, the, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's crazy when you could catch that. I caught a different couple of eras being around this long. You kind of see where. Totally, and, uh, totally. It was such a shift, and uh, that second stage opened all these doors. And then by the next year, it was like ninety percent bands from like our scene. Yeah, you gotcha. know. And then it, it it was, but for us that was huge because we always said. You get us in front of these crowds. You get us in front of Corn's crowd. You get yeah, us in get front it. of like we, we will crush this fucking place. Yeah. Especially then, everything yeah. was just coming to a perfect point. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, those first festival runs, you saw it. You're like, this, yeah. We told you we could do it, and we're gonna do it. And yeah. That, you know, and that's record sales took off and shit, and uh, it, it it was crazy to see, you know, the, the how that scene just blew up then. And, and how, what how crazy even then, like when you sold records though, like records. records there, like, you could, yeah, you get like the, it was. You could actually sell records and make money off of records like it's crazy. i know i remember oh. roadrunner flew me and freddie to europe to do press yeah like, <laughs> to, to do press me and freddie were running the roadrunner card we had the flyers hotels we were like freddie was living in the squad at the time we were like get a champagne we want chicken and Fuck steak yeah. and we're like Dude, it's crazy re- record labels with budgets that's such a like old concept wow. now and yeah. i think of the money we, when we signed in 2007 to atlantic like to a major label deal, we got one of the last sort of like, I think super band friendly, like big, bigger ones for, for bands in our kind of scene. Yes. Cause, cause they, it, we even saw at the time things were changing. And we're like, we gotta get in now and get salute this shit. to you that you yeah. caught it on the end because that shit don't exist. And I exactly. see anybody who got totally. To- and I was, I, we saw some of the budgets were like, yo, you don't need to spend this on a video. We can do like five videos, or you can <laughs> give it to us for something else. And they're like, nah, we gotta. Sp- it's it's written in language. You gotta spend this money on a video. And you see the waste going on, and you're like, this is crazy. I know. And you knew it wasn't sustainable. And like, so we were squirreling away, you know, anything we could, whatever you could. And then even by the next deal, uh, we signed for two records where there was an, a clause where if we sold a certain amount, they had to kick in a certain budget. And yeah. we knew they did not want to like give us that, that, that much. It was it was a big number. So we're like, you know what? You can buy us out for this number, and we'll go away. So they yeah. said, right, cut us a check, and then we signed. <laughs> and then we and then we signed with a smaller subsidiary that was owned by the same label. Ah, oh, you can't get rid of us. So we, yeah, so Payments, now we're in the back. Made us to leave, and now we got a budget we're to make back. a record on your company. So yeah, was, right. But man, but those days of yeah, record deals. At this point, you don't really need that shit as much as you used to. You know, it's yeah, no, for sure. But you can get yeah. it done. So it's crazy. Not, let me ask you on that Ozfest was um, what's that band's called? Uh, what was Jada Pinkett's band? Uh, no, that uh, we that was two thousand five. We did that one too. Yeah, you know, that that's one? the funniest shit about seeing that whole Will Smith smack go down. Yeah. is him cursing on TV because of that tour. He would come out with Bury Your Dead, who did a intro, Bury Your Fucking Dead. And Will Smith would sing it with him, but wouldn't say fuck it. Because he's like, nah, I got the Fresh Prince image. Yeah. Here. Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't about cursing. Yeah, so, yeah. To see him up there going gangster and slapping a dude in the face. Yeah. And, uh, cursing on TV. It was hilarious. I, I, I was wondering if you did that talk. Oh, know yeah, yeah. On yeah, they, they were on that one. Uh, um, yeah, they would come out, you know, he was there the whole tour, like Will yeah, yeah. the whole tour. He was kicking on the uh, side stage. From what I hear, it's good that he was there. Also, who knows? Maybe Shadows Fall yeah. might have been up in there. Yeah. 
<laughs> but if I can, right now, there'd be a, a, a Smith with dreadlocks. Yeah. You know, like with dreads are playing the guitar, shredding the guitar or something. No shit. shit. Oh, that's hilarious, man. Or, or playing wicked, bass. Wicked. Me, yeah. We uh, blame Paul for something. And fuck it. <laughs> and what's the, you guys got to do some big stuff. Like, what were like some of the ones that you like, yo, that's, I can't, that tour or like playing with so and so band was like, Man, we had so many like crazy moments where we, the Ozfest 2005, when we jumped to the main stage, the headliners were Black Sabbath and oh, Iron Maiden, said, and Iron Maiden <laughs> together, together. So every night our dressing room, you know, at the, at, the, at the beginning of the hall, the little one has our name. And then I look down the hall and it says fucking Black Sabbath oh, and Iron Maiden. Amazing. And I'm like, all right, this is, it'll never get cool in this. Made it, ma. Fun. And Maiden would like, those dudes would kick it too. So they would, you know, like you come in your dressing room and there's Nico McBrain like having a beer, just chilling. And you're like, I, this, this, this isn't real. Oh but, yeah. Uh, so that was insane. But, and then like, you know, when you do those European festivals for the first time, the size of that shit, you yeah, it's like great. the first, we did download. And I, that to me will always be one of the craziest shows. Not only did Iron Maiden headline that one at Donington on that like ground, you know, a download. Yeah. Uh, but just to see that size of crowd for the you know first time ever, it was just like, man, that doesn't get you better than that. That was, um, what was the biggest, do you know the biggest gig you played? I think that one, that's that one? up there. That's if good. it was either download or there was, we did one big rock festival in like Busan, Korea that had crazy yeah, like, numbers too. Crazy, where, yeah. And that was one of those ones where it's not a metal hardcore it's just a festival. Big fest, it's yeah. everything. So yeah. like, I think the headliner was some band from Japan called Bump of Chicken. <laughs> we're like, they were like the Japanese Dave Matthews, you know? Like, yeah. Like oh yeah. Shit. But those are great yeah. too, man. Oh, that was amazing. I love that shit. Right. When you just like, e either you have your few people who are there to like, just cause a ruckus or people who are just have no idea what's happening. Yeah. Love they're it. into yeah. music though. They'll like, oh, they'll yeah, stick totally. around for that shit. Be like, they'll be like six in the morning and these motherfuckers will be there like yeah i always love that shit i love playing those random like radio fests or like you know eclectic like european festivals with all over the place it's so when you join the band right you join the band they get you in do you remember like um obviously they were already kind of rolling but did you play what was like do you remember the first big show you played like what was like a, like game changer show like whoa shit okay yeah. Yeah, uh, probably the we played a few good like local shows where we would, you know, like packed kind of club rooms to start because yeah. we, you know, luckily knew everybody was doing that. But the first kind of big show Massachusetts wise was with a uh, system of a down and fear factory <sighs> at this gym in uh, Clinton, Massachusetts, which is wow. the middle of nowhere, it's this big <laughs> ass gym. And uh, you know, so I'm up there and this was still in kind of the baggy pants era of the like late 90s. And, you know, my belt breaks and there's like you know 5,000 people in this room and yeah, I'm like fun. boof right down to the boxers just like and I'm like fuck it just kick them off and like you know finish the show so I'm like there's our big big shot and I'm, yeah. I'm in Mickey Mouse boxers like fucking pants down to my ankles and then um, um you guys how long before you guys stop playing before or before a, a, a break or before whatever you guys call you know yeah we went hard man till like 2014, I guess, was the end. Yeah, so like that, say, yeah, yeah like, uh, and we, you know, our last run was a classic like 22 day European tour with 19 shows, you know, like yeah. so we ended it on like a fucking death march th to the end, you know. Yeah. Well, that's the way we toured. We toured nonstop once we started hitting the road and and yeah, it was it was crazy. But no, what was your plan when you went when you were doing that? So you, you guys knew it was coming to the end. What was your plan already? Did you have what was your not really, man. I yeah. luck, you know, I, I, it was, it was more what was happening is this life was catching up fast where I was having my second kid. Paul had just had a kid. We were starting to do the tours where one or two guys are getting, you know, fill in dudes. Mm, and we're like, yeah. ah, we had been such a, you know, besides, you know, there was early singer changes before I got there. And then we had a drummer change in the first two years and that was it. And then it was the same dudes for, you know, decade yeah. and a half. And it started to switch. Everyone's life was getting tougher. And as, you know, if these days, if you can't hit the road hard, you're not going to make enough money to survive, especially with the family. Facts. So, and it was a little before having some other options of like, you know, now, man, shit, you just get on the Twitch and do all kinds of other things. Too, yeah, yeah, know? yeah. But uh, uh, so I, I was like, man, I just got to figure out family shit. So we just started slowing down. And I luckily got into a job through some friends uh, where I work for a uh, Alvarez guitars, Dixon drums. It's like company that owns a bunch of instrument companies. That's dope. So yeah, I kind of fell right back into at least a music based world. Hell yeah, um, that's great. So 
Yeah. So, uh, but man, at the time, nah, I had fucking no idea what was going to happen. Yeah. Second kid on the way, like, you know, been on the road for 20 years and you're just like, oh shit. What's and and how, long, how long you've been living there now? Uh, now it's been nine years now. Yeah. Nine years. So I, did, I was like, how old? I, 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 right before I got married and we had our first kid, we moved out here. Yeah. And, 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 and how is it? I mean, they're a music town too. Like they have a lot oh, of music. Yeah. Like and uh, it's starting to get even better where uh, there's a new venue, uh, Red Flag, that used to, it was the guys who owned Foo Bar. And before that, they owned uh, uh, the Creepy Cross. So they've been kind of in part of the scene forever. And that God, venue yeah. is amazing. And they, this last week, there was three almost or totally sold out shows Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday wow. for like death metal. And then the circle jerks, you know, it was like Cannibal wow. Corpse, circle jerks, dragon force. Wow. So to have those, we always get the weekdays. It's St. Louis. Yeah. But, know, it cov- it, but it covers all the so, genres to see there's people there. Well, it, and, and have those all, you know, go off in a weekday. I, I feel it, was, it shows the scene around here is feeling good. So I, that was, that was cool to see. But uh, it is funny to be in St. Louis. You know, you're going to see your boys come through on a weekday. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's, 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 you know, Midwest spots. You get the weekdays, man. And, you know? and, and are you <laughs> are you vegetarian or vegan or anything? I, I was for a long time. But so you moved to uh, St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, was, uh, <laughs> you know, they smoked that brisket a long time out here, man. That shit smells good. I was going to say the only reason I was going to say because St. Louis got that yeah, barbecue. Yeah, so, oh, my you know, uh, I still try and eat healthy and do the right thing. But yeah. Yeah, but I have is yeah. what's what's your go-to spot? You have a certain go-to spot? Uh yeah, yeah. there's there's a few around here that uh that do, there was one just closed that sucks down by my way, but Pappy's will always be good Pappy's. downtown. So yep, good to know. Good we would go to yep. Jack Stacks. I know it's a little bit more uh, like uh Cheney kind of, but oh I yeah. love that. Oh, I love the KC shit. Forget it. <laughs> and then and then now they got you. So you did this, you only did that one show back. Yeah, we did the one show back, uh, and we now have two festivals coming up. Uh, we're doing uh, the Blue Ridge Rock Fest, I and, saw uh, that. which I think literally everybody's playing. There's like six stages, you know, a thousand bands, four days. Uh, wow. That's going to be sick. And then Furnace Fest after that. I so, saw that too. Which I'm psyched to see. You know, we're playing the same night as Quicksand and Earth Crisis and a bunch of uh, that one. I think I'm bringing the kids out, making a family affair, like kick it for the weekend, you know. So it's kind of perfect right now. Like festivals are a great way because we we're not gonna be able to tour full time. We may find a way to do long weekends, like I hope. But we got a dude. We got two dudes in classic thrash bands now. We got a guy in Anthrax and a guy in Overkill. Know. I and know those, those bands are busy for a, for I a bunch know, of but all guys. These old guys 60. are leaving us. Yeah, they just go. They just don't stop. Like the Energizer Bunny and Thrash, they just fucking thanks to Shadows Fall. That's why they got that. Dude, we're, we're the we're the minor league team for like for the bit of Thrash bands, you yeah, know. Like you're, so. the, the, you're the super unleaded. Yeah, 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 they're regular, you know. They need a little jolt. They just grab some dude from our band, you know, like so. Uh, But yeah, so just scheduling shit around that is tough. But uh, luckily, both of those bands are super cool. About if we can, they're they're super psyched to to have John and Jay, you know, do some Shadows Fall shit. So um, yeah, so we got those planned now, and I'm hoping that'll continue where we'll either at least do some festivals and then maybe try and find a way to do that, like west coast you know run because you know get out there and do some shows and then maybe do an actual east coast run at yeah. some point but we'll see and, and um, um a little bit backwards off that it just popped in my head because i'm thinking you know talking about the metal core shit do you remember the first time ever hearing that term yeah you know to me metal core meant like you know like crumb suckers yeah and like shit like that yeah. You know, like, like, so that's what I remember is metalcore. And even like, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Chromags by like, you know, some of the middle records, yeah, I'm like, yeah. that's, that was my idea of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then it, or, or like ringworm or integrity. So I remember when bands started getting called that like shadows fall era, I'm like, to me, it sounds pretty metal, you know, yeah, like, yeah, got we got you now. some hardcore bands in the band, you know? Yeah. Paul was in push button warfare. Jay got was in you. We're going to have that vibe. But I, you know, so for me, when it started going that way, I'm like, you know, I get it. I can see why I would call it. But yeah. to me, metalcore always goes way back to that original crossover shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's why I ask, because I see it the same way. And that's funny because that's what it is. It's like, it's usually not the bands that do it. It's the, the you know, the audience is how totally, totally. they kind of then, call I always it. loved, we, Shadows Fall got into that uh, new wave of American heavy metal name. And I'm like, we've been a <laughs> band for like 10 years at that point. And we're like, we don't feel new at all. We feel yeah, old. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another, yeah, new wave of American metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, they, they started giving all these extra letters. Oh, well, that's when the, the subgenre thing got so crazy, where all of a sudden you had like six hyphens between, you know, 
Yeah, because I remember when I was a kid, I remember and. You know, I'm uh, my I, I had an older brother, rest in peace, but he was the one that put me on. I did my first hardcore show was until '88, so a little bit later. But I remember hearing black metal. I I remember hearing death metal. That's obviously because a little bit later, and then that was it. And that was because like bands like Venom, you know, I think they were black metal. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you had and, and, thrash the metal, bands like death and stuff, you know. Or the yeah, and then later the death, run. exactly. And that was already yeah. kind of later, late, yep. you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. and then I, I, the cores, like I get them, but yeah, I always just say, I always took it as crossover bands. Yeah, Not exactly. Metal core, it was a crossover, and that was the lead. Well, by the time, like, you know, now people associate it more with like, you know, Kill Switch Engage or yeah. things like that. And, and to me, you know, like, yeah, that's, that's what it's become. But it's kind of like how, even like the emo word got changed, you know, or as I still remember is like DC hardcore, like being yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Original <laughs> emo core and shit. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's funny. Cause like listening to some of these records, I'm like, yeah, there's a breakdown, but like the rest, like shadows fall shit. I'm like, it sounds pretty metal. You know? yes, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but that's great because people, I like that people hear that because, um, you know, when hardcore guys do other things, there's always those haters that try to talk shit like, oh, yeah. this metal shit, metal shit. You guys are saying you're a hardcore band. Or, and we're like, no, you guys named saying that we're trying to be this because I'm yeah. a hardcore guy, you know, or, you know, yep. whatever. So sometimes it's like, you know, they 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 they, they want to eat themselves. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, it's hilarious. Man. Like, it is funny, though, how much that just continues on no matter what's happened. However, things have changed. There's always someone who's going to have, have those same complaints you know, yeah. down the road, like yeah. even having clean singing, like for us back in the day, you'd hear me like, Oh, it's like, why well, you got to ruin my death metal with your pretty voices. You yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why you got to put your peanut butter in my yeah. chocolate. It's like, yeah, what do you think? But also if we didn't do that, like we would have been faking it, you know, like, whereas especially like a big chorus comes in and opened up. I'm like, man, I'm into like, you know, like melodic yeah. sounding stuff. I'm like, I, that's the way it naturally sounds to me. So I got to do it that way to, as opposed to trying to, scream death metal over this rock and roll riff you know yeah. like, so uh you know but some so the the genre police i think at this point it's it's probably there's 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 so much like cross-pollination that i it's yeah now it's so something else so yeah i don't up. even hear i don't even hear that only now when they're talking about certain bands of the era like you said oh metalcore yep. band i don't even know what's the new words like what's the new yeah you know, exactly like, but it's yeah it went through the death core stage and death then core kind of, that was yeah, another yeah. one yeah death core but yeah wow it is crazy a lot of cores i'm like a lot, there's a lot of cores <laughs> there's a lot of fucking <laughs> and no and, and but it's it's it, but i always loved and i was always intrigued that it was always the the northeast that had a lot of that i don't it was just so weird to me like it's just something in the water even you know yeah. from the it, stigmatas it was, in the upstate the, the you know obviously the white trash factor has a little something to do without with a doubt the that troy that troy sneaks troy in there, water you know, you know exactly the troy High water, lead is, water shout out to valenny and brick exactly. by brick you know what's up I, I i swear that uh there were like that death metal influence in the hardcore came so out of that area for me yeah. especially those bands before a lot were dropping those like just such chunky death metal riffs, but over like the stomp. Yeah, and yeah. they would, and, and you know, to me, always the difference is as soon as the drummer knows to like thug it up where you're on the hi hat on, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. As exactly. soon as you know to do that, you got the core in you and you got that groove. Yeah. See, the metal drummers, they're going to just either do the yeah, Slayer exactly. Thing, they play through it. They, yeah. They, ex but, and, and you would hear that in all those like Troy core, like death core bands. Yes. And then, not, you know, I don't know if the uh, the newer death core, I think is more technical. Those that shit was just straight brutal. Yeah, no, yeah, no, for sure. And shout out to like all those bands that we used to play fucking with. Um, um uh, uh, man, I just am talking about them right now in my head for fucking upstate. I'm um, fucking um, um, but that's, oh, my God, I can't believe I just uh, brain farted. But upstate yeah. always had the metal. The metal core, the fucking for real. You know, it was that death metal style with it, you know, like yeah. But and they and also there those shows back then. You look at the flyers from like the QE2 or or uh, you know bogies. It would it would be like Cannibal Corpse and then like Stigmata yeah. and then yeah a local death metal band and then, all like, out war. Band. That's who I had yeah. a bla brain oh, fire with. All out war. They brought that Slayer in such a way that like yes. they weren't ashamed. But like I said, knew to thug it up on the, yep. on the breaks, you know. <laughs> and I love that they were. Why I loved it too, because they were hardcore kids. Like you know, with that look, the attitude, and they were doing that. So anytime I could get my metal off, was still repping hardcore shit. I was I was psyched. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, exactly. You know, I was like, you know, it worked out. And fucking um, 
And what's up with new music with you guys? Is that the plan also? Any new? You know, uh, they, those guys got a lot of riffs. They got a uh, lot of riffs. So there's a lot uh, of fingers in your band, and yeah, exactly. a lot of strings. A lot. They've of been trying skins. to play every note in a song at some point, I think. So and they're getting close. Yeah. So they got you know. But yeah, Hellers. you know, we we've, we've been talking about it, and uh, there's some ideas floating around. But I will see. It's got to be super. Like it's if it sounds like Shadows Fall, and we're all like everyone's yeah. in. Yeah, but I, that. I can't say it's the plan right now, but we're, we're that's that's definitely something that uh, we, we would we hope is kind of going to start to to get there. We wanted to get through this show first. Like we have such a black cloud that follows us, whether it comes to gear or just stuff, and like you know, so we're just yeah. like, yo, know let's just focus on getting through the show. We did. Now we're like, all right, we booked a couple of festivals, and they those guys have been jamming uh, at least once a week, every other oh. week if they can oh, to so keep they, it, yeah. so we don't have to like you know, jump started again when we do Smart. festivals in September. Yeah, so they're, sure. they're at least keeping it in limber. I'm just sitting on my ass because I'm a singer. But yeah, you know, yeah, you know, that's yeah. it. I'm always saying on either. And what are you listening to now? Like what's in your, what are you, what's in your, on your, in your uh, yeah. daily these rotation? Days, man, I, you know, I'm, I'm much chiller shit these days, man. I pretty much got dub reggae on in the background while I'm working. At, I've been working at home for, for a while, but I'll go back to the office on, on um, oh, next shit. Monday. So yeah, Whoa, so I, I got, reality uh, check. it's crazy. But so I've just been chilling here, usually just with some mellow stuff these days. But new but, uh, school shit, old school shit. I, I I'm I'm a big mid seventies dub dude, like old Augustus oh, Pablo, shit. King Tubby, right. you know oh, all okay. that shit. So, uh, but yeah, you know, and I, I'm a dirty hippie too, so I got I got <laughs> those dead shows on every now and then, you know. So. The, all right, the dreads. We know they're gonna go on the Smithsonian. Yeah, but, exactly. uh, but but when you die, are we gonna have to cut them off for you, or are you gonna get rid of it before that? You think ever in your yeah. life. You know, I always joke that uh, I'll I'll cut it off when I figure everything out. So I'm just gonna die with really <laughs> long hair because I don't know shit. And no. if you don't, I'm gonna ask you for the. If I see you with a bald head, I'm gonna ask you for the lotto numbers. Yeah, exactly. That means <laughs> I've reached, I've attained fucking perfect that, enlightenment. So. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm like, uh, floating by you with a bald head. Exactly like, the just, glow. Yeah. I'm like 36, 48, 32. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like whatever. But no, yeah, but, you know, it's starting to get stuck in shit now. Like where I leave the car door at the grocery store, <laughs> take two steps, and get like whiplash back. So. That, you know, it's, it's becoming a safety hazard. So I definitely got some ideas. We do a, a, a NFT, a dread NFTs. You need a couple of those. Yeah. And you're definitely going to cut pieces off. I'm going to bottle them. Well, so I was going to nickel bag them up, you know, and put <laughs> a little Shadows Fall sticker on it, you know, and just like sell them at the merch table. Like, no, you know, what we're going to do, we have, we have fr certain friends that say things that, you know, they can make these seeds happen. We're yeah. going gonna to put those dreads, you know, in with a couple of seeds and we're going to... I there know, we go. I, I got a new strain. Dude. I know. That's just. I wish there was a way to chronologically like do like a test where instead of seeing like what's in there, like I want to see the like the parties along the way. Like, oh you know, yeah, you know, because I got the yeah. whole history right here. It's like it's Listen, all here. It's, that got to be a video for you, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like like oh like oh they're back and you look at like, the histories like the timeline yeah, through totally, the yeah, dreads. Like, it's crazy. That's that where it first started. Where it first started blowing that's up. Nice. Oh, that's why you guys took a break. Uh, you got okay, signed here. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Look at that's pretty. We're gonna cut yeah, your longest. It's, if it's you like cut it, on, yeah, it's like rings on a tree, man. You know. So. Yeah, we're gonna put it there and put the markers. You see, we got ideas right there. Yeah, got, arts and crafts. We got money moves. We got money moves. Yeah. And um, <laughs> what's the deal with merch? People, if they want to keep tabs on the band, yeah, because totally. a, a lot of it seems like um. There's a, you guys got good momentum with this, and also the the whole genre again is getting like a breath of fresh air. I think it, so. It, yeah, totally. So uh, yeah, we we're active again. Like we're our Instagram account, Shadows Fall Band, and our Twitter, Shadows Fall Band, are back up and running. There's merch links there. We got some stuff left over from the show, but it's a lot of like odds and ends. So, but we're gonna have a a fresh like merch drop soon. So, but that's the the best place to kind of get info now is either on our you know Instagram, Twitter, or or Facebook right now. And now uh, hopefully like for the shows, we should have some new stuff, but I'm, I'm really hoping that like, we can kind of, we're going to be relaunching some vinyl, you know, doing anniversary vinyls again. I'm a record junkie. So yeah. even if I can just get them in colored vinyl. Yeah. 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 So, hey, pretty, did you, you know, ever think about putting any of that show you did and putting out some of that? You know, we got some footage, uh, but we'll see what we, what ends up happening with it down the road. We, we, we had tried to think about live streaming it, but we were like, you know what, again, with the gremlins that follow just us, like, case, let's just get done. through this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I, I, I actually saw some, um, I, well, I don't know if it was from you guys or the club, but some good high def shots, some angles that look really good. That's what made me think. Yeah. I was like, wow, it looked big, you know, real. I, yeah, I, I hope shit. we got like some good. It, that was the, it, it came out so good, like just visually that it, I hope we get it some some killer footage out of it. I, we are some good friends of ours got some shit, so hopefully it comes out good. But 
that we'll see down the road. But uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep the ball rolling as much as we can, and 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 try and try and make the most of uh, the momentum from that show and these festivals. And and hopefully, I would love to see new music around the horizon. As far as if it's up to me, so hopefully that's something we'll do. Yeah, I, I think so. We're musicians. I think if if you could get everybody in the room and they're getting in the room willingly like that. Exactly. It's just a matter I, of like, and I know, I know Matt and John are just rift factories. So of they, course. They, they, and I want to get, eventually I'm going to talk to some of them because yeah, killers, man, right there. There's a lot oh, yeah. of, you know, a lot of guitar. Shit. I'm into the guitar guys, even though I got like, I got five fingers, but it's really one. See, see I play guitar the same way. And like, I don't go about the 12th fret where the, yeah. it's, you know, it's <laughs> moving too fast. Like that's, but that you're a drummer happen. too. I know that. I know you play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, but oh, I, wow. I play drum and guitars like a singer. Let's see. Yeah. I, you know, because everybody knows at the end of practice, the first guy who's picking up something is a singer. Like, oh, yeah. let, let me get on your drums. So, so I, that's all right. I play bass like a sandwich eater. <laughs> like, it, it, make, it has nothing to do with nothing, but it, exactly. I get through it. But yeah. No, but, I, yeah. I'm always making it, and, and you know, I'm always recording solo stuff that they'll never even probably see the light of day just for fun here and there. You ain't gonna leave did, nothing out, any I, of the I, other I, projects? I would love to at some point. You know, I, I did a whole like four, uh, I have like a four song black metal EP that I recorded that's just like, but the key, the drums are done on keyboard where I physically like hit the, you know, the, the, even the, better. The keys and it, sound, it sounds like that old, like, you know, 80s Those style. Those are old black metal, metal band demos. called Battery back in yeah, the day. Yeah, totally. It's that style shit. One guy, like, I think he did yeah. the same shit. And, 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 and it's, it, it's, it came out like fun. So like maybe I'll do something with that shit one day, but I, I just like to do that shit just for fun, you know? So yeah. No, and, you like a bunch of weird ambient stuff I record all the time. And I say shit. put all that shit out. Nowadays is like, like we were talking about, it was taboo back in the day to do certain things. Now we could do whatever the fuck we want. Well, and now you can't just on. put it up on SoundCloud the next day. You can literally yeah. be like, boom, here you go. So, it's game on. But uh, yeah, li yeah. listen, I'm glad you were able to uh, catch you on this. I'm glad I got you also why, right after you were able to do those shows and shit. And I just hit up Zeus the other day, too. I'm like, I'm, I'm right now. I'm, I want to. I, I was like, I want to get the Northeast and I want to start because I. I I like showing the newer generation too how we connect the dots that you know a lot of people start this new gen, new generation is on um not on some I'm not hating or 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 saying anything but like they they they're not as familiar as connecting the dots where where we Love all that. come from still so yep. I just like telling people like yeah you know that kid from that band you like yo he like these bands maybe you should check out these bands in this band kind of thing just. And it you is know? crazy how interconnected it all was through that, those eras. Like, and I, but the thing is, I think now the immediacy of stuff and the, and the, how flooded you get with just content and, and just the amount of bands, it's, it's probably is overwhelming. So some of these kids just, it's tough to yeah. go back backwards when you're trying to even just wade through with the, what's happening. Yeah. So I but like, imagine, what, but, like, but I like connecting the dots. Cause I like going against the, the things that we even were guilty of when we were younger is that, Oh, just this hardcore shit, just this metal shit. It's like, look at the metal guy you love might just have got influence from one of the hardcore punk bands. So maybe check them out and vice versa. Exactly. And everybody's cousins, you know, exactly. um, you yep. know, it, it, we're at that stage where it, it really is. It's like, yo, right now, just being from the underground, we should be together. You know, exactly. And you, you go to these festivals now and it's like family reunion style. Yeah. It doesn't even feel like anything else. And, you know, and all, all that bullshit competition disappears through age two where like, you know, it's that, that was never yeah. about that in that scene. And yeah. I think it's different now that some bands For sure. can start thinking they're going to make a living off of it. When we all started, it was like, yeah, man, it was just, yeah, exactly. You know, just the love of you making a living was this, this pipe dream. And then it happened, but like it happened organically. Yeah. Whereas now when you start already thinking like, yo, if right I into two it. parts Lamb of God and two parts this, I can, I can be a yeah. star. It's Absolutely. People think approach. they got the recipe now when they're in yeah, the, so the whole game changed. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like, when you see when our guys generation get together at the festivals, it's just like, it's just a family affair, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. It's like that movie cocoon. Yeah, like, oh, exactly. <laughs> it is <laughs> funny, man. You smell like the tiger bomb and shit. Uh, yeah, oh, like, yeah. They smell you know, like game pa coffee. Parties in a little ear earlier nowadays, you know, People like, either doing Pilates or whatever, yeah, totally. or like getting their blood. Yo, but everyone's cleaner. looking good. It's, it's funny. You see the guys who stayed in this, man. Like, yo, you, you, you've you been getting yourself fit over these last few little while. Man. Right, I have good, to so. let, like you said, for the last... same thing through the pandemic, man. I'd had my first desk job and I was starting to get a little, little doughy, a little behind it. So I hit it hard through there, man. Yeah. It feels and you're, good. The, and you're a singer. You up front. They're going to pull yeah, your card. Exactly. So, but man, I, I, it, it's funny that the touring can be a weird fountain of youth where it's probably taking life off the end of it, but you look good and healthy and like young up until the end. Yeah, you man. get off that like merry-go-round and like it starts to wear off. You know, it's, like, it's, <laughs> you know what being in a band is Botox for the body. Yeah, it yeah, it wears exactly. off the minute you stop. You as fucking soon as, as soon as you stop. Yeah, totally, man. You so, got yeah. shit. 
That's Before, I, I, got, I got to work at it now, you know. But listen, I'm glad I got you on. I'm, everybody go check them out. Go check out all his other music. Shadows Fall. Again, <clears throat> I'm glad I was able to get, get you on. Yes, I hope, indeed. Thanks for having I me. Yeah, I, hopefully I can catch you guys next time you play or maybe even on some mad ball shit or next time you're around out in person, we'll get you on the show with some of the other guys and shit and fucking without doubt, without do some doubt, shit. But um, indeed. yo, keep, keep killing it, man. Good luck with everything. We talk soon. Indeed, without a deal. We'll see you soon, brother. I'm going to send you this shit later when we put it out, all right? Cool. Peace Indeed, out. Bro. We out. Uh, later.